Hello everyone, I'm Diane McFarland, Dean of the College of Journalism and Communications at the University of Florida, and I'm here today with Professor Mike Foley, who just won the Distinguished Teaching Award from the Society of Professional Journalists. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Now, this is on top of being named one of America's top professors by the Princeton Review, and that's top professors among all disciplines. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you are a very outstanding teacher. What is, <laughs> what is the secret sauce? Secret sauce? Uh, well, I'll tell you, in this job, which is the best job I ever had, and I think that shows uh, to the students, um, I've learned patience. More patience than I ever had in a newsroom, more patience than I ever had with my kids, more patience than anything. I, I've learned patience, and I think that then when somebody comes to me with something, I tend to just, okay, well, let's, how can we work with that? And I think that really it helps, I think. And then the passion. In my evaluations, the students always talk about passion. You know, I, I agree that, that patience is uh, a great asset and critically important in a college environment, but my sense is that it is the passion uh, that is what uh, got you this recognition. Well, I'm very passionate about the craft and the mission of journalism. And that sounds so corny. <laughs> But I think I think I can bring it off. I think I can make them feel the same thing, and I, that would be a success story to me. That, yeah. that, that they feel the same drive to 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 understand how to do this. It's great. Yeah, you are so youthful. Um, do you feel like uh, teaching on a college campus is a, a <coughs> youth potion? Some would say youthful. Others would say immature. <laughs> and I think uh, that I have a lot of energy for this. Uh, and I think a lot of it is the kids. I think yeah. it's the students. They, they bring a lot of enthusiasm to it, the, the really good ones, and, and that's infectious. Yeah. I think yeah. that really helps. You know, something else you bring to the table at a time of such great change, um, it is now a digital world, but, but what you advocate and what you constantly remind students of is the importance of the traditional standards and values, <laughs> the fundamentals of good writing, responsible reporting, thorough fact-finding. Uh, talk some more about that. All that is true. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not covered with bells and whistles. I'm, I'm old school, and, and in fact, I'm old. Uh, and so uh, I really do believe that, 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 yes, you can do a lot of things with a lot of platforms and fancy this and fancy that. And I'm all for it. I think it's great. The more uh, you can do, it, the better. But you've got to have the story. You've got to have the facts. You've got to have the sources. You've got to have truth. And that's what I'm after is truth. And uh, I think that that's uh, what I can bring to the table. I've, I've been dealing in this for a long time. And, and I, I just hearken back to that. You know, you, you can have the, the nicest equipment in the world, but if you don't have a story, you've got nothing. Is it true that you flunk for a fact error? I never flunk for a fact error. I don't think I made a fact error in college. No, I mean, do you flunk your? Oh, it, do I flunk? Is it I'm true sorry, that you flunk your students? Absolutely, for a fact fifty points error. off. Fifty, 50, 50 points, 50 off. points off. One hundred points. Doesn't leave you much wiggle room after that. Yes, absolutely. You know that reminds me of the crown of thorns. Um, you were a student at this college mm -hmm. in the Buddy Davis, That's correct. Hugh Cunningham era. In fact, you hold the Hugh Cunningham Chair in Journalism Excellence. Professorship, yes. Uh, professorship, sorry. Talk some about the influence those two <laughs> professors in particular had on you and your career. They were both passionate. Uh, they were total opposites in many respects. One was a har 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 arch conservative, the other one was a kind of a flaming liberal, uh, but both of them taught truth. They wanted that the story was utmost, getting it right, uh, getting it uh, first, uh, and then writing it well, and they were both the same thing. It was it was it was a terrific experience having them both here at the mm -hmm. university. They both had a lot of experience. Uh, they both were very very good at what they did, and I think that's what impressed me most about both of them is that is that Buddy was a, an, an incredible thinker. Of, 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 he, he he was an editorial writer for the Gainesville Sun and won a Pulitzer Prize the year after I graduated for that. Uh, and Hugh was a master editor. Uh, he could sling type with the best of them. He could put the paper out. Uh, on a, by himself if he had to. And some days when, when the class was doing it, we had a class that put out the Gainesville Sun, uh, he would do it by himself. And it was just, it was inspiring to see these guys do what they did. Yeah. Now, Buddy was somewhat feared, and Hugh was huggable. Uh, which I never one hugged him, I, but I was afraid of Buddy. <laughs> which one do you think you uh, <coughs> come closest to in terms of uh, personality and reputation with the students? <sighs> Wow, that's a really good question. You, sh you should have gone into journalism. <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> the, uh, uh, wow, 
Well, I kind of hope I'm a little of both. Yeah, I think uh, you're a little bit. I think uh, that, uh, and I'm much more huggable after they pass my class. Right, right. <laughs> During the class, I'm much more feared. Yeah. And I try my best to be accessible, but I think the class has such a reputation that, and I use that as a motivating tool, yeah. that people are, are afraid of getting uh, less than an A. Yeah. And they're all going to get less than an A, <laughs> very few. Yeah, the students I speak with really appreciate the hard lessons that they learn in your class, in addition to the passion. In fact, our our college chapter of SPJ, mm -hmm. the Society of Professional and Jour Journalists, produced a t-shirt this year. That is true. Uh, it was their fundraising project. It had a wonderful picture of you with one eyebrow arched, and it said simply, what would Foley do? <laughs> How does it feel to be iconic? There are a number of things that have happened to me over the course of my 13 years here. Uh, I have one teacher of the year. I'm getting this terrific award. Uh, I was named one of the 300 best professors. I think that may have been the most flattering of anything that's ever been done is to see students walking around with your, your yeah. face on their on their t-shirt. That was yeah. really very flattering. Yeah, I thought that was quite an honor quite too. Quite an honor. Not institutional, but, but a, a great an honor. honor. Now, you, uh, SPJ has played a big role in mm -hmm. your life as a student, as an editor mm -hmm. at the St. Pete Times, now the Tampa Times, and as an educator. Um, talk some more about that. Well, um, my I got my first job too. Uh, SPJ. It was called Sigma Delta Chi back in the mm -hmm. dark ages when I was in school, and they had a, their annual, uh, I think, state banquet at the Holiday Inn at 13th and University, and they had the editor of Look Magazine was the featured speaker, and I went, uh, and uh, I was inducted into Sigma Delta Chi at the time, and that's where I met uh, Bob Stiff, the editor of the D Evening Independent, and I was one of these students that would fail miserably today because I didn't have an internship. I never worked regularly for the Alligator. Uh, but Bob Stiff and I got along, and Hugh Cunningham sang my praises, and he hired me. And, uh, and that's how I got to the Times Publishing And you company. have done that for many of your students. Mm -hmm. They have gotten wonderful jobs by virtue of your recommendation I, and the network that you have. I've done the best that I could. I, I, it's very important for me to get to know as many students as possible because yeah. I, I can help them. I really can. I'm the first, one of the first people that gets called as a reference, mm -hmm. and so they got to get to know me. Whether and you like built that network by virtue of your role at the St. Pete Times, uh, one of the, the best newspapers right. in the country, uh, undeniably. And I've often told you that I consider you to be perhaps the best city editor to ever come through uh, American newspapers. Talk about the transition from a very lofty professional role uh, to academe. Wow. Um. I love the fact that I don't have to do anything administratively, <laughs> and I'm sure you're, no budgets. I'm sure, no, no budgets, no uh, anything. No, uh, it's it's. But it's the same thing as being city editor. I love my job at the Times when I was city editor. City for five years, and I would watch young people come in, and they would be green, some of them or inexperienced, and, and watch them progress and go on and on and. and uh, several of them. I mean, I've, I've worked with people who have won 28 Pulitzer Prizes, prizes, and that was a wonderfully gratifying experience to see these kids come in and, and just get better. So now I have that on a, on a similar scale, but I have them for a semester, and I can watch them come yeah. in uh, unable to use punctuation, uh, <laughs> unable to spell, unable to write a sentence, and then by the time we got it, it's pretty darn good, and it's, yeah. it's, it's so gratifying to see that happen. Do you and stay in touch with many of them? I do my best. A lot, yeah. of, them, uh, a lot of them will keep it touch. I, I get thank you notes from people who have been uh, out of school for five years. And I know you reach back sometimes and ask them to come and, and speak to your classes. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you, you know, you've recently had some uh, big names come to the college. Uh, with they all owe me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I must have something somewhere on them. Mm -hmm. But we've had Hal Raines, a former executive editor of the New York Times, Rick Bragg, a Pulitzer Prize winner, Tom French, a Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, and we got more coming in the fall. So. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, you bring great distinction to this college, and this award is just one example. Sure. Um, there have been many others, so. Uh, on behalf of this college and your many fans, thank you so much and congratulations again. My pleasure. Best job I ever had. Great. Glad to hear that. Thanks, Mike.